Speaking of talent, I have here, and this uh, is kind of a stretch, speaking of talent, my American Patriots Almanac. Don't leave home without it. This is the second good book, okay? <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to run through this. Some of the great things that have happened, right? And we all say, you know, uh, America is a great nation, and people debate that today. But let's face it, a great nation is made up of great people. Great people do great things. Question to you, what great thing will you do in your life? Okay, so think about that. Now, while you're pondering that thought, I'm going to read some of this. This is things that happened uh, this week in American history or in North American history, and you'll get the gist of it. Here we go. In 1790, Thomas Jefferson takes office as America's first Secretary of State. Ta-da! All right, we'll throw it out there. Um, Jump to 1963. Alcatraz, the federal prison of Alcatraz Island, the San Francisco Bay, closes. All right? Al Capone says, uh, you know, it could have closed soon enough. <laughs> it's not often you see a prison close in this country now, is it? No. Now, I know um, maybe it was that Obama got the whole thing kind of confused. Yeah, he was trying to close Gitmo. And uh, instead that he couldn't get it done. So he should go back to uh, well, who was who was president in 63? I think it was still uh, was still Kennedy, Kennedy at that time. Yeah, I'm, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't have the exact the exact date, but it was <laughs> um, it was probably that summer just before. Just um, to be sure. Just to be sure. Yeah. Hey, 1980, President Jimmy Carter announces the United States will boy, boycott the Moscow Olympics. And you know why? Do you know why? Can anyone out there? Um, <laughs> tell us why we boycotted the Olympics in Moscow. Anyone? Because of the Reds? <laughs> because the Soviet of... Union of invasion of Afghanistan. Oh, my. My, how things have changed. <laughs> right? Does that mean they're going to boycott us? And they wonder why Chicago didn't get it. Yeah, right? Gee, that would have been appropriate, too. <laughs> okay, here we go. In 1765, the British Parliament enacts the Stamp Act, uh, the tax uh, that meets with the colonial indignation. Yes, the Stamp Act. Every piece of paper in the colonies had to have a stamp. Everything. M imagine what toilet paper would have been through. Can you picture that? That would have been, you know, like right now you got like little flowery patterns and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You got a picture of some old man's face. Yeah, and that might that in itself may have been appropriate. So, <laughs> it's something to think about. This is food for thought, America. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I know they, they they want a tax on it. Texas is telling us they want ten cents on toilet paper now. Yeah. Or <laughs> when do they get done with cigarettes? They're gonna come after the toilet paper people next. It's all yeah. rolling paper to them. It's exactly. <laughs> Whether it comes on a roll or you roll it into something, it's rolling paper. Yeah, there you go. 1946, the first U.S. rocket to leave the Earth's atmosphere is launched from White, White Sands, New Mexico, and reaches an altitude of, drum roll, imaginary drum roll, end of imaginary <laughs> drum roll, 50 miles, 50 miles. And it only so took two hours to get there. It had one of those hybrid engines. So it ran on ethanol. <laughs> right. It That's took a, two hours because it was drunk. It couldn't it, figure out where it was going. That was it. They had such a party the night before. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot to roll the windows up. Oh, let's see. Oh, hey. Um. All right. Uh, was Kennedy for sure with the closing of Alcatraz? Okay, March twenty first, nineteen sixty three. So that was Kennedy. All right. Excellent. Good look up there. Okay, we're having fun tonight. Hey, in 1972, Congress sends the Equal Rights Amendment to the states for ratification. And unlike the 16th Amendment, the state, well, like the 16th Amendment, the states failed to ratify it. But unlike the 16th Amendment, Congress did not report it as being ratified. So, <laughs> so in the end, the, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment, as proposed in 1972, failed. Uh, failed to be ratified by the states. Okay. Hey, what hey. was the wording of that amendment? Do you have that? Do you have that handy uh, on there? No, or? actually, I don't. Um, I'm going to take a quick scan through my book here. Um, okay. No, no. Also on on um, this week in history, Anne Hutchinson, going back to 1622. Uh, let's see. The 1638 was banned from the Massachusetts Bay Colony. That's what's written in the book here. Um, that's the case study that they put in here. Which is another thing unto itself. Um, you ever saw The Crucible? You ever saw that play? Um, 
it, it's very powerful and it, it's good it's a good play if you ever get a chance to see it i recommend it hey in 1775 and hey john you're gonna love this one mm. patrick henry delivers his liberty or death speech in richmond virginia right <laughs> liberty or death that is it yes as for me he's the guy who celebrated that uh, with the signing of the Bill of Rights or with the adding of the Bill of Rights to the Constitution, it effectively rendered the federal government a dead letter. Yes, wow. he, had, he, had some, he had some reservations, <laughs> to say the least. But there were, George Mason was another guy who had uh, reservations. And uh, there, there were some people, believe it or not, who refused to sign the Constitution. There were some who refused to sign the Declaration. So... Interesting piece of uh, news there. Hey, 1806, the Lewis and Clark expedition departs the Pacific coast and begins its return journey east. Nobody <clears> talks <throat> about that. No one talks about that, no. No, and that was like the secret thing, you know. And uh, they talk about uh, Jefferson, you know, exceeding the, the authority of the executive branch by sending Lewis and Clark out to explore this new tor territory. And um, I just, I, that spin, that spin, I don't see it. I don't see did, where he exceeded his, his uh, executive authority. Yeah. Now, now, didn't Lewis, Lewis, uh, I think it was Lewis anyway, he picked up uh, syphilis, right? He picked up syphilis, and at some point he, he um, was going to shoot himself. And, uh, they, or, and they were like, well, it was just an accident. And it's like, um, it's a muzzle loader. You yeah. don't really <laughs> shoot yourself on accident. Yeah, it's kind of tough to <laughs> shoot yourself with a 14-foot gun. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. But, however, however, I have heard through the grapevine mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. if you were to go hunting with one of those things, with Dick Cheney, there is a very good possibility that you could end up shooting yourself. Did you, yeah, you, you <laughs> That somebody will accidentally shoot you right in the face. It's incredible how these things happen. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Hey, that Patrick Henry thing was uh, at the St. John's Church in Richmond, uh, Virginia. So just to throw that on top there. Uh, what else we got here? Interesting things. Hey, 1965, America's first two-man space flight uh, begins. Gemini 3 uh, lifts off from Cape Canaveral, which is just up the road from us here in Florida, with astronauts Gus Grissom and John Young. Uh, let's see what else we got here. 1765, the Quartering Act. All right. British Parliament enacts the Hated Quartering Act, requiring American colonists to provide temporary housing for British soldiers. And then that is talked about in which amendment? Which amendment to the U.S. Constitution? Okay, contestants in the chat room, start your engines. Which amendment? And I'll give you, a, it's one of the first ten. Talks <laughs> about quartering of troops in, uh, in your home. Which one is that? Do, do, do. See, i got to get the music going on here. I've got to get the, the sound effects down. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave that and see what they come back to. So, let's see. Andrew Carnegie incorporates his giant uh, Carnegie Steel Company and then goes on to uh, just completely obliterate all of his competition. Franklin Delano Roosevelt signs legislation providing for independence for the Philippine Islands. Wasn't that nice of him? <laughs> you know, I, I think personally... It touches my heart to know that an American president can say, hey, you guys over there, you're free. I think that's incredible. That's almost like Lincoln freeing the slaves in the South, but not the North. I think that's, that's right about there. Texas 101 says it is the Third Amendment. Yay! Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes, it is. You are correct. And, uh, and we'll, 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 send you, we'll send you something in the mail. <laughs> hey, in, in 1989, the uh, Exxon Valdez uh, spill uh, takes place up there at Alaska's Prince William Sound. 11 million gallons of oil. How about that? So, yeah, we had that. Uh, which, which, which was such a, you know, they, they said, oh, this is the most terrible thing. And they went after, they they exceeded the law in, in uh, prosecuting Exxon. They wanted them to pay all these fines that were beyond the law and they didn't learn their lesson then that uh, they shouldn't put caps on damages that companies have to pay for environmental disasters. <laughs> well, no matter what they had put on, I'm sure that once Bush got into office, he would have taken it off anyway. So <laughs> it would have been a it would have been a band aid, a temporary thing. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, 1865. Robert E. Lee orders his last attack of the Civil War against Fort Stedman. 
near uh, Petersburg, Virginia. Uh, and it's an you know, interesting side note. At the time that Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant, Lee was not a slave owner. Lee represented the South. Lincoln wanted Lee to lead the Union Army. Lee turned him down and went south to his beloved Virginia. And Lee had no slaves at the time that the war ended. However, Ulysses S. Grant, slave owner. Something <laughs> to think about. Hey, Makes and that... you wonder about history, right? And, uh, and what um, how, how the, the, the stories that we're told. Yeah, it, it's like everything that happened between Lincoln and the state of Maryland. Never got any of that in any history book. And I have read a lot of history books. The books that are before 1940 will we'll touch on that. They'll talk about it. The books that come out from 1950 on, not a mention of it. Somewhere in the 1940s, the whole point of, the whole perspective of, of U.S. history completely changed. And you see it. If you get old history books, and I've got a stack of them behind me here, I collect those things like they're going out of style because they are, right? The truth is a rarity these days. But you read those books, and then you read the books that are in the high schools today, completely different. You wind up going, where's this? Where's that? Where's the other thing? It's not in there. They just left it all out. Hey, that leads us to 1965 civil rights activists led by Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and their historic march from Selma to Montgomery, uh, Alabama, uh, the step, at the steps of the uh, state capitol. So that's something else. Hey, I got one more thing here. 1982 groundbreaking ceremonies are held at the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C., um, oh, I got one, one other one. Last one I want to throw out there. 1794, the government authorizes the creation of a permanent U.S. Navy and the construction of six frigates, including the USS Constitution. So there you go. That is This Week in American History. And I can close All right. the book. Okay. I, thought it, I thought it would never end. <laughs> thought it would never end. It goes on and on and on. <laughs> and